We continue our program with the talk of Stefan Nielsen. He has a most interesting CV for he is president of the European Economic and Social Committee. Based in Brussels, this committee enables civil society organizations across Europe to take part in the European Union policy and decision-making process. So it's an important non-political advisory committee. But he has, always, he has also been a farmer in northern Sweden for more than 30 years now. So this is quite another aspect of his experience. And he is a long-standing leader in the Swedish Farmers' Federation and in other associations in the field of education and culture, development and aid. So if we want to learn about social entrepreneurship, here's our man. I give the floor to Stefan Nielsen. Thank you very much indeed. It's always good to have an applaud before you speak. I can see that some of you look a little afraid. Here comes an institutional man and we we'll read the official journal from the commission. But uh, wait and see. Still, I will keep some format in order to give you a key message from an EU institution. Some of you may wonder why the president of the European institution has come to today. Others might be afraid that I will talk in European jargon that no one understands. These people may have a point. But I will continue in a little more different way. I can also tell you one story about coming from an EU institution. Sometimes we are allowed to work without time. But of course we have to send an application in three copies five days in advance. <laughs> Nevertheless, I agreed to come and to perform this task. And I'm personally curious about every new creative and innovative thought. As you said nicely, uh, I'm a farmer, also working without tie at home. And I come from a rather pretty isolated part of Europe, even if I don't feel that I'm isolated, in the middle of Sweden. I also believe that uh, the European institutions need to reach out to more on an unusual audience, not just the usual suspects in Brussels. Could you read what is written? Do you see? Engaging people for a sustainable Yes, engaging people for sustainable Europe. And this was the title of my program when I took um, the office of the president. It's very nice word, president. In, in some English you say sometimes chairman. It's more easy. When I took the uh, presidency of European Economic and Social Committee, and it is just more just uh, than the title, it's also a deep conviction, my belief, and what I want Europe to become, engaging people for a sustainable Europe, a place where every citizen is actively involved in making and try to making a better world for the next generations, for your children, for my grandchildren. Today, you invited me to engage myself in this conference, TEDx, and I do it with pleasure, believe me. Today, and with this speech, I will try to explain who is interested in social business in Europe, what it is, Probably you know it already, but I will give my thought about it. Why we need to develop it and how we can do so. Uh, I will forgive you if you forget everything I have said. Not if you fall asleep, but if you forget. But please keep in mind, and I think it's very important for you, because in the end I will ask you what was my key message. Social business can be a solution for economic growth and social development. 
social business can be DNA for tomorrow's Europe. And social business can help people to engage in building what I want to achieve, a sustainable Europe. So what is the, uh, si the situation? We are, of course, facing challenges time. The economic crisis has hit millions of families. Unemployment is on the high, especially for young people. The environmental issue makes the picture even bleaker. And population is aging. Don't look at me, please. And we lack a sustainable pension and care system. I strongly believe that uh, these difficult times we are living through can bring also opportunities to create a new future. When the roof of my farm, because we last year, if you remember, it was heavily snowing, and we have one meter, and in the springtime, it's very heavy. The, the roof was nearly broken in my animal hall. I had to repair it. I didn't like it, but I had to do it. Even thought it was tough to go through. I had no other choice. And we fear, firmly believe that growth and social well-being must be the heart of our policy. If we really want to tackle economic, financial and environmental challenges, if we want to live in a society where everybody, you and me, can find our place, then we must commit ourselves to invent and contribute to a new and better world. Many of you may be unfamiliar with your organi me, me, my organization. What was the name? European Economic and Social Committee. Have you seen me before? Have you heard about this nice name? No, probably. But we were established already in 1957, inserted in the treaty and the voice for civil society organizations. We are nominated by member states, 344 members coming together, make opinions about proposals coming from the Commission, giving advice to the European Parliament, to the Council and to the Commission. And we are the only consultative body together with the Committee, uh, committee for, for Regions, local and uh, region authorities, at the European level to deliver, what I said, the point of view of people based on the ground, those most directly affected by EU legislation, those who live Europe on a daily basis. The committee has been working for a long time to reconcile economic development and social cohesion. Please look around you. European leaders want to restore, want to restore hope and trust in the economy. Believe it or not, but it is absolutely needed. And they are drawing up strategies to deliver growth, employment and competitiveness. And the European decision makers, you have heard about the name José Barroso, Herman van Rompuy. And they are now also, and I can show that it is true, that they are also realizing that we need to de develop new formulas that are currently underdeveloped to find a new balance between responsible budgets, cutting budgets, and growth and job creation in Europe. And it is not only the EU decision makers who are aware of that, it is also clear in the member states. There is a clear request that we come back to growth and job creations. And I would like to point out social business as one thing that can get the economy back on track. Can get the economy back on track. So what is social business? Of course. There is no official definition of social enterprises. 
It can be said that it is a business uh, that addresses social issues and creates positive changes in its community. It is also good, in our view, to keep this definition uh, as broad as possible, to keep flexibility and allow creativity in this economic field. What is certain is that social business is a positive step because social enterprises seek to serve the community's interest rather than make the maximum profit. And what I saw in the presentation just before the break, it was just examples on this. Social business and economic growth can work together. When you talk about traditional banking men or others from traditional business sector, these two words, social business, for some of them, it sounds like contradictions. But as I said, it is not, and it should not, and it could work together. As in a human body, my or yours, social enterprises can, can be seen, in my view, as a DNA for the new economy that we want to set up. We must create companies whose main focus will be, for instance, on healthcare for elderly, providing assistance to homeless or others, or helping people with disabilities also to pursue a possibility for careers. I therefore firmly believe that social enterprises can be a key element in my title for my program, Engaging People for a More Sustainable Europe. Following the daily news, it is easy to get the impression that the European economy is dominated by multinational enterprises and stock exchange. Who is on the TV screen? It's the big guys from the big companies. Who is the newspaper writing about? It is very often uh, big companies, uh, stock market change. But what we usually fail to convey is that more than 99% of all European business are very diverse forms. There is different forms of companies besides these on the stock markets. And they are also, in fact, all small and medium-sized enterprises. They are individuals willing to take risks. They set up a business and do it successfully. These businesses reconcile economic responsibility with taking care of one another. Europe's small and medium-sized enterprises are the driving force for European sustainable economy recovery. New times create new needs, and new needs call for new solutions. The key growth sector of the 21st century's economy will be, what do you think? Health, education, and care. And if you would calculate for the future, it could be that up to between 20 and 30% of the GDP will be done in these different sectors. And I also think that what we have seen and what you have um, seen today, that people want to get more involved in responding to the uh, social, 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 society's need. And social business can provide the solution. We have already seen very good examples. A social entrepreneur is uh, indeed often motivated by the fact that he wants to solve a social problem, to help those in society who are somehow at the disadvantage and to make a positive difference. Those entrepreneurs are creating, as we have seen, innovative solutions, delivering extraordinary results, improving the conditions of people by creating jobs that cannot be relocated. Each entrepreneurial action with a social concern is like if you try to build something sustainable, like a stone that paves the way for a better and sustainable future. 
when it comes to the social business, my impression is that on the one hand, there is business, enterprise, profit-seeking and markets. And on the other hand, there is doing good, charity and society. These two concepts have so often been said, seen as, what I said also before, fundamentally different, conflicting and opposed. But in my view and in our view, hopefully your view, it is not. These concepts complement more each other and both create long terms grow. Social business is reconciliation between social Europe, which is now more needed than before, and competitive Europe, which is also needed. Social business is a pillar for sustainable Europe. Dear participant, how could we create the right environment for social business to develop in Europe? You should know that this is also a political initiative by the Commission, by the Commissioner Barnier, to focus on the social business and to set up also a framework which could support, which probably could be good for you when you come out uh, after studies and try to, to, to work in the field. So like uh, me used the term social Silicon Valleys to describe the possibilities for future places and institutions that will put resources and energy into business which reply to social problems. We have sought um, to set up the best environmental, environmental for social leaders companies and institutions to cooperate. They need to learn from each other in order to launch large-scale initiatives focusing on public interests objectives. Let us say what Mark Twain said. They didn't know that it was impossible, so they did it. It's like the, you know, the story of the bumblebee. By technical uh, constructions, uh, engineer, in principle it cannot fly, but nevertheless it fly. The United States, they created Facebook, Google, and hopefully we in Europe can create the best social business knowledge and development. So let's give social entrepreneurs the tool to succeed. What could be a reasonable tool? I will talk about regulation, education, dedicated programs, and label. When it comes to regulations, we need a better and more legal framework for social enterprises to develop and grow. And I will once more remember you that there is an initiative even from the Commission in this field. And we must, for instance, uh, simplify the legislation for cooperative propose a statute for a European Foundation, or improve the situation of mutual societies activities, which is lacking, depending on that there is less willingness from member states. When it comes to education, we need to educate and support the next generation of social entrepreneurs. It sounds like you. Social business studies should be reformed in schools and universities. When it comes to dedicated programs, I mean that it is social enterprises need to access and to dedicate, dedicate its support programs for development. Initiatives involving hubs that provide business support, workplaces and monitoring uh, have improving effective during the start-up start up phase. Label. A social enterprise's label would increase awareness, recognition, and could secure the, the future for, for social business. Let me, let me end by saying that <laughs> <laughs> you have a very nice installation. But there was somebody saying that, oh, oh we can go together. That <laughs> that there was somebody saying that let's the world go around and who was it who was it it was done before you were born abba and they talked about money 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 and of course when you talk about social enterprises you need also to secure 
that you have access to money. Should I stop there? Yes. But I will tell you what we do in Brussels when people are... Ah, you go on. No, I will tell you what we do in Brussels. The final when <laughs> final sentence, When please. we want people to start to talk. When there is a brief pause, you start to applaud and we finish immediately. <laughs> so, a warm applause. <laughs> Invitation. Well, it's interesting that you ended with money because we ended the session before the break with money mm -hmm. and what we can do with money to make a positive change. You, uh, your big, well, your, your slogan, I might say, is engaging people for a more sustainable Europe. Could you give us a short example of how your committee uh, helps people doing that? Wait now until summer when you will have 100, how many 100 political leaders going to the United Nations in Rio to discuss the plan, commitment to have a sustainable development for the future, which is probably your and my children's uh, p possibility to, to survive. It's uh, the plan for uh, sustainable development. We have done a big event, but we also connected with uh, our partners in other countries outside Europe, China, Brazil, South Africa, in order to, to get the negotiators to have a strong commitment and hopefully a result. And one last question. You are a farmer in Sweden. What, how is Europe important for you as a farmer in the middle of Sweden? What is important? How is Europe important, the European Union important for your work as a farmer? Let me be clear. It's not the common agricultural policy. Of course, in the end, for business, it is important. But it is that in historical times, what we have done in Europe, what we have done, we have been in war, we have moved borders, we have been small population trying to kill each other. That's the reason why, even if we talk about crisis, 60 years of cooperation is a success. Thank you. That's a good statement to end with.